Okay then, so um, expanding, oops, expanding double brackets using the grid method this time. Um, so you should have just watched two other videos. Um, don't expect you to watch them all in a row. But um, the first one was expanding single brackets. The second one was expanding double brackets using FOIL. And now this is a third video in the series on using the grid method. Now I've used the exact same four questions to show this method as I used for the FOIL method, okay? So you can compare them. So using the grid method, the reason I like this is because it it works for lots of different things. Um, if you had a bracket here with two terms and one here with, with nine terms, and I'm not going to give you that, but if you did, this method would still work, okay? Which is why I like it, and it's really clear. You can't really miss anything. I'll show you why. So what we do, we do just a sketch of a grid, and I'm doing it two across and two down, okay? I'm going to put a little time sign in the corner because we're multiplying things. And that's because this has got two terms. Here's one term, here's another. And this one has got two terms, okay? And that's why I've got two on each side. So I'm going to put the terms from the first bracket along here. I'm going to have x here and positive 1 here, okay? And I'm going to put the other one down the side, x and positive 2. Now, it wouldn't have mattered if I'd put this one along the top and this one down the side, okay? You'll get the same answer because you're still multiplying it all together. What you can't do is put the x and the x up here and the 1 and the 2 down there, okay? You have to keep the bracket together. So x and 1 are together, and x and 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply everything together. So this square here, let's grab another colour so you can see what I'm adding in as a kind of the answer. Um, x multiplied by x, going to be x squared. x multiplied by positive 1 is positive 1x. We just write positive x, so we don't need the 1. x multiplied by positive 2 is positive 2x and positive 2 multiplied by positive 1 is positive 2. Now I'm putting these signs in because it makes the next step a lot easier if they're already there. Okay, makes everything much easier, especially once you get onto negatives and things. So now I've done this, my bit inside, I've used a different colour, you can do the same because now I know everything in this different colour is going to make my kind of my expression down here. Okay, so x squared plus x plus 2x, plus 2. Okay, and I'm not going to spend ages showing you how to simplify this because we did it on the last video. Have a look on there because once we get to this point, the methods are exactly the same from there on. Okay, the simplification works the same. It's just this part. Um, so yeah, these two go together. We get x plus 2x gives us 3x and then we get x squared plus 3x and then the plus 2 comes down. Okay, so there's your first answer. So yeah, I really like the grid method because the thing is, if you miss out one of the grid sections here, you, you can see that, you know, you think, oh, I've not done something because there's a big gap on the paper. Whereas using the FOIL method, it's a little more easy to miss things, okay? So personally, I prefer this one. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's try another one. Okay, so this one here, we've got a negative involved this time, so keep your eye on that. I'm going to go again with the grid. We get, I'm going to do x. I'm going to, I'll do with the second one along the top this time, just so you can see it works either way. x plus 2. Make sure you keep that sign with it, okay, the negative 3. So x multiplied by x is x squared. And with negative 3 multiplied by x is negative 3x. Positive 2x. And negative 3 multiplied by positive 2 is negative 6, okay? I've not done it in a different colour, I did mean to, but it sees four here, the answers I've written in, which become x squared, subtracts 3x, plus 2x, subtract 6, negative 3x, negative 3x plus 2x, or negative 3 plus 2 is just negative 1x. Okay, use the number line if it helps, it doesn't take a second to jot one out. Okay, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, and there's our answer for that one. Now, when I'm going from this step here and writing it out, uh, you might be wondering, does it matter which ones you write down first? Could you start with negative 6, for example? Um, you could, you could. But traditionally, kind of the convention is to start with the x that's got the highest number of powers. Okay, that's how, so x to the power 2 
is the highest number of powers because this one here, although we don't write it in, is actually x to the power of 1. Okay, we, we don't write that, but officially, that's what it is. Um, so the highest number of powers, then the next one, all the way down to your constants, which always come at the end. Okay, um, alternatively, just go in a pattern each time. Okay, start here, go across like this, so you don't miss anything. And um, that's up to you which way you do those. But yeah, I, ideally, we have them in that order. It's not the end of the world at GCSE level if they're perhaps not quite in the right order okay as long as it's all in there that's fine okay next one two negatives this time okay so x negative 2 x negative 7 okay there we go so I have x squared in there negative 2x negative 7x and be careful with this one because this time we're going to get a positive 14. Okay, so I'm going to go work across this way. My highest highest power here of x is x squared, negative 2x, negative 7x, positive 14. Okay, I can just simplify here. Negative 2x subtract 7x, negative 9x plus 14. Okay, um, I say I like this method. I just think it's really clear. I think it's a really nice way. It doesn't cause too much mess. It's just filling in boxes. You should be happy with this one. Okay, the last one, uh, you've probably seen this one on the last video as well, if you watched all of that one, where we've got this two in front. Okay, so I'm going to do the expansion here using the grid method, and then we're going to come back and consider that too. Okay, so we're going to ignore it for a minute, the number two at the front. And let's just do my grid x plus 9 x subtract 2 okay we're going to get x squared positive 9x negative 2x negative 18 um, and then we're going to write them out so we're going to get x squared plus 9x subtract 2x subtract 18 Simplify here because these are both x's there. Again, don't mix it up with the x squared. That's something different. Okay, it's a bit like um, let me have a think. Like x is an apple, x squared is the apple pie. Okay, we can't actually mix the two things together. Okay, so we've got these here. We've got x squared still. Add seven x because nine subtract two is seven. Subtract eighteen. Okay, but we now have to consider this. So this is going to be the exact same thing I did after the last one. Okay. But what we can do, I'm going to put brackets around. The reason I'm putting brackets around it, okay, don't panic. I know some people panic when they see brackets getting involved. Don't panic. I'm putting them around because I know, because this two is outside the brackets up here, I know I have to multiply everything by the two. So the brackets make sure that happens. Okay. Because if we didn't have brackets, we'd get 2x squared, add 7x minus 18 which is not the same thing, okay? So the brackets make sure we multiply everything inside by that 2. So we're going back to what we did for the single brackets. We're going to do 2 multiplied by x squared, 2x squared, 2 multiplied by 7x, positive 7x there, that's 14x, and all the way on to the last one over there, 2 multiplied by negative 18, which is negative 36, okay? And... Actually, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this already. I've just kind of dived in and done these. But what you're actually doing is you're just making this look a bit different, okay? This is the exact same thing as this, okay? They mean the exact same thing. So you could actually write them with an equal sign, okay? They mean the same thing. But one of them is easier to, to look at than the other one. And now which one it is depends on what you're doing with it, okay? In maths, sometimes having brackets in is really helpful, okay? And we actually will learn how to put brackets back in sometimes, okay? That That is really helpful. But sometimes we don't need the brackets and we want to get rid of them and have it looking like this, okay? So, so far we've learned how to go from this one to this one. And soon we're going to recap, if you haven't, if you've already done it, some of you won't have done it before, we're going to recap how to put the brackets back in and go to this. Okay, so it's really fluid. We can just switch between the two depending on which is the most convenient. Um, 
Okay, folks, make sure you've taken some notes, at least one example, please, of the, each of those in your book, at least one, ideally more, um, and have a go at the questions I've set. Please get in touch if there's any problems. Thanks.